Hello everybody, welcome to Red Tool House. Say hi Kel. Hi Kel. Perfect. In today's video, we're going to look at how to maximize, how to break down a log to get as much 2x4 material out of it as possible. So we'll be using a little bit of math, we'll be using a little bit of strategery here. Oh. You like that, right? <laughs> <laughs> and we'll, we'll try to see what we can do to get the, the most amount of 2x4s out of this particular log. Now, if you're wondering anything about this log, it came from uh, the tree that we dropped last week. It's in the video right chair. And that's the one we got hung. Uh, so, of course, we got it cut, got it down here. And this is the first portion of that tree. This is, the, this is where the stump was. Of course, this is the top. But you see one little dilemma we have here is, uh, I mentioned in last week's video, we had a little bit of a smiley face to this tree. And I tried to cut it out, but some of it still showed up here. Um, so you can see I've got about two inches of clearance under this front bunk and it actually <clears throat> it actually clears about right here. So if I was to cut this log off right here then I would have a really nice cylindrical log. It would, get a, it would yield a lot of lumber. The problem is it would be very short. In fact if I cut that off that's at 90 inches. So that's a little over seven feet and of course we've got the um, Got my wedge cut, my bird's mouth, all those things. So this, you're not going to get the cleanest lumber out here. In fact, it should be starting about right here. So that would make it even shorter. But I could actually do that knowing what I need these 2x4s for. I need them for our chicken hoop house, which doesn't require me to have 8 foot long material. In fact, most of the stuff's going to be 5 foot. And then right back here in the loft, uh, we're going to build the knee wall. Those are 6 foot high knee walls. So I could literally get away with this and get a cleaner cut. So I think I'm going to do that. It's a shame to sacrifice this piece. But if I try to cut all that out, I'm going to have a lot of wane or I'm going to end up making my cant so much smaller that I'm going to lose material all the way down the log. So I think we're going to cut this off on the mill carefully with the chainsaw without injuring either the chainsaw, the mill, or myself. Good plan. You think it's doable? Yeah. All right, we'll see. I love your confidence in me. It's completely unfounded. <laughs> it's for the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep the camera rolling. All right. <laughs> Bam! Bring me my chainsaw, please. Decurl, you need to get further over. I want you Are on you? this side of the tape measure. Okay, I was trying to, but you're kind of in the way. Oh, sorry. You should say, hey, dummy, get out of the way. Don't knock my tape measure off. That's my mark. You're going to knock my tape measure in the mud, weren't you? Hey, hey! Come on in the <laughs> Sit down right there, please. Am I, am I okay to go straight? Hang on. Disaster waiting to happen. All right, come forward. Whoa. Lower the bucket. A little bit more. A little bit more. Oh, right there. Oh, this has got a good idea written all over it, doesn't it?
Raise the bucket. Raise. Raise. Looky there. All right, take it to the pile. Take it to the pile, honey. Oh, left it easy. Right there, that's what. All right, down. All right, up and out. Gracias. Parallel. Where is it? You mean pick a tractor parallel? Yeah. All right, so now we've got a flatter log that lays fine on the mill. Kel helped me move it over with the tractor there. Do you see an issue we have now? It's very short. It is short. So short that what happens? It's not, doesn't reach It's back. not doggable, is it? Yeah, so this is one of those deals where, where I've placed these log guides on the mill, it's set up more for eight foot long or longer material. So I can roll this log up and have it dogged on this side, but I got nothing to keep it here. So there's actually a little cheat that I've done in the past. And this is why it's always handy to have tons of lumber laying around that you've milled. I'm going to take this sacrificial piece right here. Ooh. You can tell that thing's still got some water in it. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to stick it like that. So that kind of makes a guardrail for our log. Drop these down a little bit so we don't cut the tops off of them like we did in our first video. No fun in that. How far? Um, well, that one you can leave up because obviously we're not going to run the mill that far. Okay. You sure? <laughs> Famous last words, right? Sure, Troy. I believe you. Okay, so now I've got this securely placed using this piece of poplar as a guide, as a guardrail, and that will allow us to make our first cut. Okay, so we've got the cant squared, and I've got a lot of weighing on this side. Uh, so I'm probably going to want to cut that off and also have some here as well. But I stopped after my four cuts because I want to try to figure out exactly what makes the most sense to get this out. So if you see here, our width is nine inches. So we got nine inch wide, and we've got 10 inch tall. So nine inch wide. 10 inch tall. Now again, if I'm cutting two by fours, which I'm cutting uh, box store dimensional, so really one and a half by three and a half. So as you can imagine, that nine is going to work out well with the thickness. So the one half inch portion of that, you can imagine because one and a half divides evenly into nine, right, Kel? Yes. <laughs> so that should be six. One and a half goes into nine six times. So that is ideal for the height or the thickness of the 2x4, so inch and a half all the way across. So that leaves my um, 10 inch for my 3 and a half. Well, that doesn't go in evenly. So what I'm thinking about doing is we'll get the first 3 and a half and then the 7, and then that leaves 3 left. So we're not going to be able to get a full 3 inch wide board out of that. So since I have 3 inches here that I can't get the full width of a 2x4 out of, I'm going to turn and get 
two by fours this way. So I'm going to cut the first cut I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut down to eight and a half, set that board aside, and then I'm going to cut down to seven and set that board aside. And that's going to be the thickness that I need. So when it's time to cut from my widths, the rest of these boards, then I can put that back in line and get two by fours out of that. So we were able to get as many 2 by 4s out as we can. Now we had to sacrifice that poplar board. That was an oddball anyway. Our last cut, again, since we're cutting an inch and a half, wasn't a 2 by 4 So these two don't, don't count. But we got these, and let's count them up. So out of that one log, we were able to get 2, 4, 6, 8, Wait, let's try that again, dummy. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen two by fours, which is not a bad haul out of uh, out of one log. Again, they're only um, what seven feet long, but they'll do what we need to do here. We were running out of daylight last night, so I uh, picked up here this morning. So all in all, we had a pretty good output from that log. Again, trying to maximize what we could get from that one log, even though it was short. We still got 14 two by fours out of that that we can use for our project. Now, again, if you watch the video from last, then you'll see that was the short of the two logs. I still have another 16 foot, or maybe I think it's a 19 foot log left over. That's the rest of that tree that uh, we haven't milled yet. So I've got enough two by fours to do my hoop house project. So I may go ahead and mill those for two by fours to do uh, the loft knee wall. So we'll see how that goes. And again, we'll just keep documenting this. Hopefully, if it stops raining, we'll be able to get some of these uh, 2x4s put in place and be able to change the scenery a little bit. All right, take care, everybody.